I'm Marty Yanofsky, and my laboratory here at UCSD is trying to understand the molecular details for how flowers develop. Now, we do this by studying mutants, mutants in which the normal genetic information is altered or changed in some way. And here's an example of a mutant flower. This flower completely lacks the reproductive organs, the stamens and carpels, that you would normally find in a flower. In fact, if you were to look very closely, you would notice that the stamens and carpels themselves have been transformed into perfectly normal appearing petals. Now, the secret to understanding how flowers develop lies within the genetic information within every single cell. The genetic information, of course, is the DNA, the DNA that carries basically the blueprint for how a flower will develop. Now, in order to understand how genetic information or DNA controls flower development, it's very useful to isolate or purify the DNA from cells. And today, for a demonstration, we're going to start with broccoli, um, a plant that I'm sure most of you love to eat almost every day, a uh, broccoli plant, and we're going to grind up the broccoli and purify the DNA away from all of the other parts of the cell. Now, it's a very simple procedure. You can do it in your classroom, and of course, you'll want to do it at home uh, with your mom and dad. So we start with a broccoli plant, and all we do is we break it up into little pieces and put it into a blender. So I'm going to break it up, and it doesn't really matter how much you take. It can be about a cup. So the first step then, after adding the broccoli to the blender, is to add some water. Just pour in the water. And add a pinch of salt, about a, just a little pinch. You can see it doesn't really take very much. And then, don't forget to put on the lid. If you don't put on the lid, you know what might happen. Turn it on. That's all it really takes, about 10 seconds or so. And we've really ground up the broccoli into nice, tiny little pieces and have a liquid mush. And the next step is also very simple. We just need to get rid of some of the pieces of broccoli that haven't been broken up. So we're going to take this solution that we have, and we're going to pour it through uh, a sieve of some kind, or in this case, some cheesecloth, and allow the liquid that contains the DNA, of course, as well as other things, to go through into the bottom. And in the very top, we'll trap all of this broccoli that we haven't quite ground up finely enough. So we still have the DNA in here, but we've got a lot of other things in there as well. And so the next step, which is also very simple, we need to add some soap, and any kind of detergent will do. In this case, I'm going to use this detergent and just squirt in a little bit, a couple tablespoons worth, like that. And also some meat tenderizer. What the meat tenderizer does is it degrades the proteins, and that will also help in the DNA isolation step. So again, it doesn't matter exactly how much. Just put in a little of that meat tenderizer. And then we simply need to stir it up. And what's happening now are the cells are getting broken open by the detergent and the meat tenderizer that we've added. To really maximize the DNA isolation, we'll let that go for about 10 minutes. And then we'll come back to it and do the final step, which is to add some alcohol. OK, it's now been about 10 minutes. And what we're going to do is take this material that we have and pour it into uh, this tube. Of course, you can just do this in a small glass at home. It really doesn't matter what you pour it into. And just pour about that amount in. And you can hold it up to the light, and you can see it's kind of a cloudy solution. And then what we need to do is take some rubbing alcohol, just standard rubbing alcohol that everybody has at home, and we're going to add the alcohol, again, very, very gently, very gently, we're going to add the alcohol we don't want to mix the alcohol too much. We want it to end up on top of the plant cells that we've broken open. So you can see the clear alcohol still is up on top. And the plant cells that we've broken open are, are on the bottom. And then the DNA should be at the interface where the alcohol meets the plant cells. And so we can just very slowly and gently wind the DNA around in a circle. And those little tiny DNA fibers that are very long get tangled up with one another. And as they get tangled up with one another, they come out of the solution into the alcohol and allows us to very easily see them. And we can wind it up like that, right out in a very nice long piece of DNA, and we can lift it right out of the solution 
and we can see basically pure DNA we've extracted from those broccoli cells. So here is the pure DNA, and in our laboratory we use this DNA to identify the pieces within this DNA that control the development of the different parts of the flower. And so we would ultimately go back to the flower and isolate the different genes or pieces of DNA that control the formation of these beautiful white petals. I'm sure you can see that this procedure of isolating DNA is very simple and uses common household items and plant material that we like to eat, like broccoli or cauliflower or peas, for example. And so I recommend that you try this at home and impress your friends and family.